Warning, within this video there are mental health aspects discussed based upon a fictional character created from multiple case studies. If you or anyone you know is suffering from any mental health issue, please seek out help from a healthcare professional because you are not alone. We have provided many helplines at the end of this educational video to provide you any assistance you may possibly need. Today we are going to visit our character John. He is a university student. He is your typical high achieving and well driven student who loves all of his classes. John has many friends and a relatively active social life. He partakes in many different sports and clubs at his school. Lately, John has been noticing some irritability in his mood and he has taken notice of this change. He tends to get more angry very easily, even when the problem is something he normally wouldn't care about. He also noted an increased activity in his thoughts and social interactions, and decrease in his ability to sleep. What is going on with John? Bipolar Disorder Type 1 is a common mood disorder that is diagnosed by at least one episode of mania or can include depressive symptoms. Mania is the occurrence and the change of one's behavior that is marked by things such as increased speech, increased irritability, and increased agitation. Depressive occurrence is marked by a change in mood, such as feeling sad, empty, hopeless, or tearful. There is also bipolar disorder type 2, which includes depressive and hypomanic episodes. We already know what a depressive episode is now, and hypomanic episodes are characterized by a milder form of mania. In experiencing hypomania, your energy level is higher than normal, but it's not as extreme as seen in mania. Coming back to John, these are some of the things that he's been experiencing at the moment. Could it be possible that John is experiencing mania symptoms? However, there is a bit of overlap in terms of symptoms between these two different bipolar variations, and this is due to the classifications of diagnosis. To be diagnosed with bipolar disorder type 1, there needs to be at least one episode of mania, and there may also be depression present. In bipolar disorder type 2, there must be at least one hypomanic episode and one major depressive episode for this diagnosis. John is very interested in psychology and is currently enrolled within a course, and his teacher is going to discuss some important aspects of the mental health disorder of bipolar disease. Hi class, today we are going to be learning about bipolar disorder. Let's start off with some symptoms. Some symptoms of bipolar disorder include abnormal sleeping patterns, a feeling of being alert and active more often than normal, some feelings of aggression along with intrusive thoughts. John started to realize that he had been experiencing these types of symptoms, but he didn't want to jump to any conclusions or rationalizations yet. So now time for the fun stuff. The biology behind bipolar disorder is quite complex, but we're going to keep it simple for all of you to understand. Important chemical compounds known as neurotransmitters are released by brain cells called neurons. These neurotransmitters send messages between neurons and throughout the body. This is like sending mail from one person to another when we want to relay a specific message. Usually, within the body, there are set levels of certain neurotransmitters present. However, in a person with bipolar disorder, this balance can change and this can result in depressive, manic, or hypomanic symptoms. Dopamine is a chemical compound that plays many roles and is associated with making an individual feel very active and happy. However, in bipolar disorder, the levels of dopamine are elevated which leads to the mania and hypomania symptoms. At the same time, low levels of dopamine can make someone feel unenergetic and tired which puts them into a depressive state. Serotonin is a chemical compound which acts as a mood regulating neurotransmitter along with influencing behavioral functioning. For example, serotonin may play a role in pain sensitivity, motor activity, feeding, aggression, and sexual behavior. Abnormal levels of this neurotransmitter have been associated with depressive symptoms. However, there is still research needed to be done to see what role serotonin plays involving manning symptoms in bipolar disease. With this in mind, there is still ongoing research involving dopamine and serotonin and what they do specifically in bipolar disease. Now we know the biological aspects of bipolar disorder, so let's look at some treatment options to help these individuals. These may include antidepressants, mood stabilizers, and anxiety medications. 
These typically can help prevent mania episodes, stabilize mood swings, decrease anxiety, and improve sleeping patterns. So are there treatments other than drug therapies? Yes, there are. An example is cognitive behavioral therapy. This is an effective treatment in decreasing the depressive symptoms in bipolar disorder. It can also help decrease relapse rates, mania severity, and improve social functioning. Cognitive behavioral therapy helps the patient to become aware of his or her feelings and think of ways in which to deal with their emotions and or thoughts in better ways. In this case, bipolar patients have distorted cognitive thoughts and thus proved an effective non-pharmacological treatment option. John thought this was very interesting and intriguing how someone can come to be happy or sad and change moods almost instantly due to chemical imbalances or changes of certain hormones. John was very interested in what his teacher had taught today and decided to gather a bunch of his classmates and friends to start a mental health awareness group to educate his school about diseases such as bipolar disorder and other mental health related disorders. John was very motivated to start this group to improve his social interactions with others again and started to feel like himself without worrying about self-diagnosing himself as he would leave this for a healthcare professional. This video was for educational purposes only. If you are suffering mentally from any crisis, please contact any of these helplines below.